who are your top five guys that that you should that you think you should people should be checking out going into the 2022 fantasy leagues in redraft and also okay. dynasty too. Okay, also in dynasty, yeah, um, yeah. So these guys for me, man, uh, mostly. I mean, it'd be kind of hard to get a few of these guys in dynasty, but you you can you could probably finagle and, and and get a couple of them. But one in particular that I'm really really on actually it's it's like a two part. I love Justin Herbert uh, going into this season. Um, but I kind of wanted to preface on a second tier, not really a second tier because he's, he's, he's below, he's below nobody, but it's also Lamar Jackson. But I got a couple of caveats to where Lamar Jackson could be, uh, my number one quarterback. It just depends on what they do in the all season. Right. Mm -hmm. But if we go forward, just like it is as of today, no changes whatsoever. Uh, then Justin Herbert is my number one guy. And reason being, real quick, I'll just give a little caveat on it real quick. It's because, number one, of the offense. Uh, when they brought in Joe Lombardi last year, mm -hmm. that, in my opinion, rejuvenated that whole squad. You know what I mean? They put the uh, He put the pieces in place and put those guys in position to win and to uh, accentuate what Justin Herbert does. Um, you know, Mike Williams, before he actually got hurt, was balling. He was only second to Cooper Cup, you know what I'm saying? Because he was actually playing that X role, uh, excuse me, that uh, Michael Thomas played, which. Yeah, that was, but that was only three weeks. I'm not trying to interrupt you, but that was only three weeks. You can't sit there and say he was on Cooper Cup, man. Well, uh, what, I'm, what I'm saying is if we go in, I feel you, I feel you. But in a, <laughs> in a vacuum, he was only behind Cooper Cup by maybe like 10 points. You know what I'm saying? Cooper was balling. Okay. But again, yeah, you're right. You're correct. But for those three weeks, but that's 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 kind of going towards my point even more. If he, if he had never heard that knee, who's to say, man? And man, he probably would have been balling like stupid all year because he was getting multiple targets. That's the key for me in this offense that Joel Lombardi has, has brought, which is basically uh, the New Orleans Saints offense um, that they had, you know, with Michael Thomas and Alvin Kamara and everything. They brought he brought that with him to L.A. You know what I'm saying? And uh, they balled out. You know what I mean? So quickly, I'm going to move on to the other one. Uh, well, before I move on, again, like I said, Lamar Jackson would immediately shoot up to my number one choice if, and I keep beating this dead horse, man. I've been saying it since he's been in the league. And TD, you know what I'm talking about. But if they finally get him an alpha receiver, it's going to be over. Lamar Jackson will be stupid. You hear me? I'm talking about we're going to see stuff that we've never seen before. The man already won an MVP uh, with, with Willie Sneed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you feel me? Okay. So okay. You, you give him some let, – let, let's – I'd even say – because, you know, the rumors out there about Antonio Brown, right? Mm -hmm. You put Antonio Brown in the slot, in that offense, along with Mark Andrews. Then you got Hollywood to, you know, take the top off the defense – and bringing back a healthy Gus Edwards and uh, J.K. Dobbins, it's over. It's a wrap done deal. So, anyway, I move on. Um, okay. okay, I'm going to let you go because I'm not going to interrupt you. Go ahead and finish. Yeah, 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 because you know me. I can go on a soliloquy when it comes to Lamar. <laughs> you feel me? Um, but RB, I, uh, a guy that I'm looking at this year <clears throat> is A.J. Dillon. You know, again, this is another guy that, you know, me and you both have really been on and talked about in the past couple of years. Um, but the dynamic is shifting. Now, here's a couple of caveats. The main one is if Aaron Rodgers does decide to leave, we ain't got to worry about Aaron Jones no more. It's already a 50-50 split as, as of right now. You know what I'm saying? Um, when Aaron Jones, excuse me, when Aaron Rodgers, if he does decide to leave, Mm -hmm. It's over. A.J. Dillon is now LaFleur can actually implement the same processes and mentality that he did when he was with in Tennessee when uh, he let Derrick Henry just go stupid, right? Mm -hmm. And we both know, I know this might be a controversial statement, A.J. Dillon is better than Derrick Henry. You can at me, you can say, I, I want the smoke. I, I want you. I said the same thing. I agree, Richard. You was the first one on AJ Dillon. So, guys, there's you know, you know, I talked a lot about AJ. Um, I like AJ, but Matt loved him. And when I start once Matt started pushing him down my throat, 
I was like, well, let me go check the guy out, you know, because I, I had seen him at Boston College. So once I went and watched him and I was like, you know what, Mac, you might be on to something. So I got to give him this credit. So I just wanted to go and take that little caveat right here and say, look, man, that's your guy. You was the, one of the first guys that talked about him being better than Derrick Henry. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, man, you know, I, I in redraft going forward, um, he and he actually could be one that you can get at a discount as of right now. So some guys, if you're in a dynasty league, you know, you might be doing a draft, a uh, startup dynasty or whatever. AJ is one that you could probably go get um, for a little. I'm going to say little is nothing because some people do know his value now. Is, you know, it was shown this past season. But um, it's still the cloud of what's Aaron Rodgers going to do. You know, AJ Jones, uh, excuse me, uh, Aaron Jones is still there. So a lot of people are going to still take those, you know, those uh, factors in consideration, right? Mm -hmm. But AJ is the guy, and he's he's proven it time and time again. So, like I said, if you can try to make some moves to get him early, I would do it. Um, but in redraft, you know, he'll he'll probably go. I don't know, uh, maybe around about the fifth round, somewhere in there, fourth, fifth round, just depending on your league mates. I agree with uh, that. I think he's going around that ADP. Yeah. But I, to me, that's a steal because, again, like I said, at the end of the season, they were 50 50. You know what I mean? So the splits were basically even. Um, so, yeah. So, all right, moving forward uh, from a tight end, Mark, uh, Mark Andrews. You know, uh, I'm, I'm high on Kelsey still, even though I think he's on the decline just a okay. tad bit. But his decline is still tight end one. You know what I mean? I His agree. floor is still better than some guys' ceilings. I but Mark, agree. you it's feel me? His ADP is at. It's just a little too high probably to get him at this point in time of his career. I agree 100% with that. Right, right. And, and that's the thing. See, Mark Andrews is starting to, to shift in that dynamic, so to speak. He's starting to excel up, you know, because he ended up being tight end one. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And, and you're going to have people that's going to um, creep up in that, in that same category especially your guy. And I'll give you your flowers too, man. You, you was on Kyle Pitts, man, way earlier than what a lot of people were. Um, even to the level of the superstardom, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people thought that he was going to have to have a transition, so to speak, even myself. I didn't think, even though we talked about it and I said he was more of a wide receiver type, right? Mm -hmm. But you were the one that did say, yo, no, this kid, he can line up and he can play. He He's not your, you know, in line, in the dirt type of tight end, uh, but the attributes that he have, he'll excel. And he did just that. I don't care about not getting in the end zone right now, especially as yeah. a rookie. The team That's wasn't the good enough. enough. The team wasn't good enough to make sure that he was going to get the targets in the green zone all the time. It was a exactly. more Cordell Patterson type of, of year or uh, game plan. Exactly. I agree 100%. And like I said, they, they make a couple changes here and there, then boom. You know what I mean? The whole dynamic is going to shift with him. So but I didn't want to get off on a tangent on that, but I was just saying how the dynamic is shifting as far as those top tier um, tight ends where it used to be just Kelsey and Kittle or Darren Waller. Mm -hmm. Now you're seeing it shift to more like Mark Andrews, uh, Kyle Pitts, probably Hawkinson again this year, um, you know, if he comes back healthy. But for me, I'm going with Mark Andrews simply because, like I said, the target volume mm -hmm. that he, you know, he received and that he's going to continue to receive. Um, especially if they do get an alpha receiver. He's a zone killer. Mm -hmm. Mark Andrews is a complete zone killer. He eats the zone up like none other. You feel what I'm saying? Yep. Um, yep. Kind of like what Kelsey does. So, And again, like I said, for me, uh, target volume is king. And he showed this year, this past year, even when they had Huntley and uh, those other guys in there, man, he still – he didn't miss a beat. You feel? Mm -hmm. No, I agree. I agree. He was my uh, top tight end this year, too. I thought he was going to have a great year, and I think he's got two or three more years at that level. Yeah, absolutely. And then my last guy, man, you know, we've been hearing about him all all, um, <laughs> all season, basically. And, you know, T.D., you, 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 I know you're going to be an attestment, you know, to me as far as I was on this combo from day one. So as soon as I heard that uh, Stafford was going to L.A., Mm -hmm. I said, uh oh, <laughs> you feel yeah, me? Yeah. It's gonna be over. So yeah. Cooper Cup, I know this that's a high uh price 
Some people gonna have to pay, but he's but doing he, it again. Basically, what you're saying, he's gonna do oh, it yeah. again. Hey, ain't no doubt in my mind, bro. I'm telling you something. Um, and I don't want to give too much of an inside peek of my draft and philosophy because, as well as you, you know, we've got certain philosophies that we like to adhere to, and you can get those. Like I said, I know you you can uh, you do it on your OnlyFans. Uh, you can hit me up personally. Some of you guys want to kind of know my drafting strategy. You can hit me up on Twitter. I'm going to be coming out with something later on. Um, I've developed something called Discount Drafting, um, and this kind of gives the inside peek of how I draft. But to not give too much away on it, Cooper Cup is one of those guys that's kind of outside of my range for the Discount Drafting, but there are some exceptions. When you got mm-hmm. guys that are game changers, mm-hmm. you got it. You can't pass them up, right? Mm-hmm. So Cooper Cup, depending on the league, you know, we talk about redrafts too. Um, he could go anywhere from one to four. It really just depends on the league, uh, the league scoring. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. there's never – well, I ain't going to say there's never been, but it hadn't been a wide receiver taking it at the 101 mm-hmm. since uh, A.B. And he's proven, man. I mean, he, he was a triple crown winner this year. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So – he smashed records, and um, I don't see it stopping at all. Um, so Cooper Cup will be my last – or in my wide receiver spot, he's the guy that I'm, I'm trying to target if I can get him. So, you know, like I said, I, I don't know if I would take him over, let's say, Jonathan Taylor. You know what I mean? If Jonathan Taylor's sitting there, I might have to go Jonathan Taylor because of the volume of – and the green zone targets. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Excuse me. That would be the only reason I would take somebody over Cooper Cup. If I can get Jonathan Taylor, I might go him first. You feel me? Gotcha. Gotcha. So uh, before I get started, guys, I just want to go and welcome everybody in chat. I know some of you already left already, but Wesley, appreciate you being the first one in here, bruh, bro. Good job, man. I hope you uh, did a, um, really well on your fantasy season. I know um, I asked answered a couple questions for you this year so hopefully bro you got that ring if not then you at least came in the top three that's what i like to try to guarantee guys that follow me that i'm going to get you to the top three and get you in the playoffs i can't guarantee a championship because that's more gotta let the chips fall sometimes and sometimes stuff don't go your way but thank you wesley i appreciate it bro bro i'm trying to grind i'm trying and andrew hernandez what's up bro bro 100 glad to see you here um guys you got any like a particular question sometimes Go ahead, put it in the chat. I will get to it. I can I ask Matt or both of us to get to it. So, guys, you don't never be scared to put questions in the chat, even if it's off topic. And again, my homie Wesley showing love says, "Keep up the hard work, y'all." And Wesley says, "Gotta go, uh, naughty game." <laughs> so yeah, appreciate that, Wesley. But uh, so let me get started with my top five. So I'm gonna start with the quarterback position, and the guy that I'm picking up. At, co- at the quarterback position that I'm targeting is Deshaun Watson. I said what I said, Deshaun Watson. I love, look, his ADP is not going to be high. I'm going to be able to get a killer top three quarterback later than I would normally do because of what's going on with Deshaun. Unless somebody just a Deshaun lover, right? If they're Deshaun lover, then you might, you know, they might snap, uh, you might get sniped from him. But listen, Deshaun Watson is, you know what he is. I actually, guys, and I want to, this is a little edge, edgy, but um, Deshaun Watson, is probably the best quarterback in the NFL that hasn't won a Super Bowl. And I'm, and I'm talking about even the Super Bowl winners. Like, he's really, he's great. Look what he did with Houston. He took a team that probably should only won three or four games, and he lost on the he lost on the playoffs by one game. Brandon Cooks was his best receiver. What, now, was it Brandon Cooks? If I'm uh, wrong, who was it? Yeah, who was the receiver? Uh, he made – I don't think Will Fuller was there then, was he? Yes, Will Fuller, but he was. I think he was suspended or he was he hurt. He was. He was. Somebody so, else. I think it was Kiki Kuti. Yeah, it was him and Cooks. I think. I think yeah, you're right. No, it, it wasn't even Cooks. I don't think Cooks was there yet. Was, no, was Cooks there? Was, I thought it was just Kiki and um another slot guy that was like a a guy off the bench or something. I don't know. Mm. I'm gonna have to research that, but he didn't have a lot of talent. Because um, so D-Hop, I, I think it already left, I think. Yeah, D-Hop had been gone. He was, mm-hmm. I, I think it was a couple gadget guys, but I don't know. But either way, Deshaun Watson, guys, be targeting him. This guy can ball. All right, so um, my running back, guys, that I like is Elijah Mitchell. 
I said what I said, Elijah Mitchell. And the reason why, guys, that I'm high on Elijah Mitchell because this is the best run game in the league. And they're not going to use Debo out in the beginning of the season, of next, uh, come, this coming up season, because they need Debo for the playoffs, right? We know what he can do. They're not going to give him 15 carries in week one. Um, so Elijah Mitchell is going to be, be seeing – he's going to be getting between 15 and 20 uh, carries a game. So this guy, great holes. He's a good running back. You don't have to go and get him in the first or second round. You can get him around, what, third, late third, fourth, and after you already – you know, I'm a zero RB guy. So I didn't already got my Tyreek and Stephon Diggs, right? And then I get Elijah Mitchell. I love that three right there. I think it's great. They're great starters. They all getting a lot of touches. So I love Elijah Mitchell. Wide receiver, and I've, I've not said him before on other videos, and I'm going to do some independent videos on this guy. And it's Gabriel Davis. I said what I said, Gabriel Davis. Guys, Gabriel Davis is his his size. Right now, he's just learning how to run routes and be a professional. He has the talent for us, to, like his speed, um, his jumping ability. Um, he has all the athletic ability. But right now, he's just sharpening those skills with that great coaching staff in Buffalo. So next year, Cole Beasley is just going to be the slot guy. If They, they might let Cole Beasley go because he don't got the that, uh, that jab. So this might be a Gabriel Davis uh, where he go and get bombarded with targets because they taking away Stephon Diggs. So you got Stephon Diggs and Gabriel Davis. Those are really great athletes on the outside. And then they can always use Isaiah McKenzie or Cole or whoever there for the slot. So I love Gabriel Davis. And to go ahead and give you a little caveat, I love Buffalo offense this year. So you go ahead and target those guys. Don't be scared. So um, my last but not least, guys, and he said it already, it's Kyle Pitts. Yes, mm -hmm. Kyle Pitts. You go ahead and get him. I'm not going to take no Travis Kelsey or Mark Andrews with my 2-1. I'm not doing that. I'm going to wait a little bit later where I can get Kyle Pitts in the third round. Yes, it's because there's so many players that's going to be out here this year. Nobody's going to take a tight end up at Kyle Pitts level like early, right? So he's probably going to be like the fourth or fifth tight end off the board. So you can wait. So you don't have to go tight end with your second pick. Because a lot of people like to go Travis Kelsey or George Kittle or Darren Waller or somebody like that, right, or uh, Mark Andrews. Me, no, I'm going to get my another receiver. Tyreek, uh, Stephon Diggs, Elijah Mitchell, Kyle Pitts. Bam, look at that four right there. You know those guys can fall there. I might get sniped, but even if I get sniped from one of those guys, I'm going to still be okay. So, guys, yeah. Kyle Pitts is a great tight end going into this year. I mean, go yeah, into this year, and – Guys, the touchdown is going to go up. So everything is just going to do this. He's not going to do this. So it's going to be up, guys, and I think you can have the best tight end. He's young. He's ready for 10 to 12 targets a game because he's young. He can take those hits. So those are my uh, four guys. Again, I'm going to name mine, and I'm going to tell Matt to name his. My four guys, quarterback Deshaun Watson, be looking out for him. Uh, running back Elijah Mitchell, wide receiver Gabriel Davis from Buffalo, and tight end Kyle Pitts.